Hello everyone, welcome to Do It. I'm Simon and today we're going to take an in-depth look at how I go about making a 2.5D one color sign with a textured background that looks like it was hand carved. I usually start with a pine panel that I'll get at my local big box store, sand down the top surface so it's nice and smooth before I give it the main color. Nothing special going on here, just multiple coats of a semi-gloss spray paint. Depending on the finish that you want, it's usually best to roll or brush on a latex enamel but I happen to have a whole lot of black spray paint laying around. Next, I need to mount the piece to the CNC table. Typically, I'll use my threaded inserts, but sometimes it's just easier to pre-drill and screw directly into the MDF. I had more than enough material to accommodate the entire size of the sign, but it's still pretty important to maintain a certain level of accuracy when setting up your X and Y zero coordinates. With the board mounted to the table and everything zeroed up, we can start to take a look at how things will run on the software side. This is not a modeling tutorial, rather how I go about assigning toolpaths to existing vectors. For this sign, I'm starting with a V-bit engraved toolpath that's going to carve all the way around the logo and fill in all those tiny areas of fine detail. Next, I use a half inch diameter clearing bit to surface the material near the logo in certain places where my texturing toolpath wouldn't remove all the paint. The texturing toolpath is a whole lot of fun because the software comes with a preset to make it look like it was gouged by hand, but you can go in and make all the setting changes that you would like to suit your needs. Things like the depth of the gouge, the length of the gouge, and vertical and horizontal overlaps. Not to mention the size of it would uh, be determined by the diameter of your bit. And in my case, I'm using a quarter inch ball nose. Here you can see that proper selection of your vectors is crucial for telling the toolpath where to cut and where not to. I'm wanting to leave the logo undisturbed so I set a, a boundary offset with this setting here. As you can imagine, covering an area this large might take a little while, and in this science case, it was about a two and a half hour cut. Finally, it would be time to cut the whole thing out using a quarter inch end mill and tabs to hold it in place. But I always like to make a toolpath without tabs so I can click away the excess material and get a true preview of what the sign is going to look like. Now we just get to watch the machine work its magic. Starting with a quarter inch 60 degree V-bit. Next up we have a half inch diameter straight bit to do a little clearing. This step is definitely more preference than it is necessity. Now it's time to do our background texturing and for that I have a quarter inch ball nose. It's important that between bit changes you zero the machine to the surface of the material or to the surface of your sacrificial table so the machine knows what the new Z0 height is.
Here you can see that thanks to our proper vector selection and our border offset tolerances, it properly skips over the areas I want it to leave that are part of the design. After cutting, upon inspection, you can see that there's going to be several places, particularly where the V-carve meets the texturing, that you're gonna to need to do a little scraping or sanding to touch everything up. It is pine after all. Now in the collet is an upcut quarter inch end mill that's doing the profiling that's going to remove our sign from the base material. There's about six tabs all around it and because of this slight warping of it, you can see me having to hold down just a little, tiny bit uh, to make sure that it, the rest of it didn't pop up, but it was no big deal. When you remove it from the backing material, you want to make sure you're extra careful so that any fraying happens on the waist and not on the sign. Next, of course, all those tabs need to be sanded off. Having been profiled out and sanded, of course now the edges are bare so we need to take a moment to paint those the same color as the rest of the sign. And for this one I chose a water-based polyacrylic. It goes on kind of milky but ends up leaving a great finish without yellowing the grain, which is what I really wanted on this pine sign. This sign was made for fellow maker and content creator Tony Way of Way Woodworking. And it's neat because we connected thanks to the amazing network of makers that exists on YouTube and all the social platforms. It was a pleasure to make and we hope you found something informative or entertaining about this build video. If so, consider subscribing and don't forget to check out Way Woodworking over at his channel. There will be a link in the description. We'll see you next time.